Hello, I am Ron Baker. Welcome to Empowered at Last. Today we're going to continue talking about the subject of duality and opposition. If you have not already listened to the foundation of this particular subject, which I introduced in episode 42, please go back and listen. Please get this vital education. Our planet is in desperate need of understanding and resolving duality. I'm going to give a very quick overview and then you can go get much more detail from last week's episode. A brief overview is that duality is nothing more than the opposition of two sides. And we all learned some version of duality when we were little kids. When mommy and daddy passed on the limits of their particular comfort zone and they said, oh, that choice does not work. Do my choice. Oh, that feeling is not acceptable. We only allow this side in this house. So some houses, let's just go to sad and happy. Some houses were not comfortable with joy and celebration. We don't want to be too loud. We don't want to set ourselves up for too much expectation. We don't want to be disappointed. And we learn to squash the joy and happy. Other houses didn't feel safe with sad. Oh, you don't need to feel sad. You don't need to cry. You don't need to be strong, be powerful. Boys don't cry, whatever version. We learned good and bad, right and wrong. We learned certain parts of ourselves were acceptable. Other parts of ourselves were unacceptable. This is huge because now we don't live in the freedom of championing our individuality. If I don't feel safe to be all of the parts of myself and learn from all my feelings and learn from many different choices, then I'm taught when I'm very little and very dependent on mommy, daddy to provide all my survival needs we get taught to give up tons of self, to squash tons of self in the name of agreeing with mommy and daddy's comfort zone, which they tended to learn from their mommy and daddy's comfort zone, who tended to, you get the point. We can back up certain family systems who passed on generational limits, decisions about good, bad, right, wrong, this is what we do. This is how we act. And believe me, from having taught thousands of people from lots of different families and cultures and religions and races, not two families fully agree on the list of good, bad, right, wrong. One family is going to say, you need to go in and fight for everything that you want in your life. You have to be the best. And another family is going to teach, you need to be humble and quiet and loving and don't be a pain. Don't speak up too much. Don't be a problem. Now, <laughs> somewhere in between self-negation and aggressive, demanding conquering, there is, let me teach you a set of principles and values that champions you as an individual. You're not the same as your sisters and brothers, neither are they the same as you. There are certain things we all share, such as we all have the same nurturing needs. We all want to feel safe and connected. We all want to feel acknowledged, accepted. We all want compassion and respect. Yes, we all share those things, but guess what? You're a unique individual. You have every feeling in the spectrum of possibilities. 
you have so many perspectives that you're going to grow into that will evolve from stage to stage in your life. I want to champion you to trust your individuality, to champion that and allow yourself to discover and grow and evolve. Don't get caught up in one limited perspective of good, bad, right, wrong, reward, punishment. Instead, embrace values, valuing yourself, treating yourself well, and then valuing others and treating them well. You see, if we had gotten that kind of education because our mommies and daddies hadn't gotten that kind of nurturing education when they were little, the planet would be operating together. The planet would be operating from all of the gifts and benefits of the huge amount of individuals that are on the planet. We would learn from one another, we would encourage one another, we would see the benefits that we all have to bring to the table. But if we never learn to trust our own sense of value, we never learn to trust that our own needs could be met, we never learn to trust, period, then we end up embracing mommy and daddy's comfort zone. And then we go out in the world and we oppose anything that's different than what we were taught was the right way, the good way, the acceptable way, the lovable way. And we have to make everything else wrong and bad. This will never work. We cannot transcend a world that is trying to control and dominate. We cannot transcend a world that is at war because I have to control everything that's different from me. I have to dominate. I have to make wrong. I have to annihilate. When we feel threatened, we try to control. And when we can't control, it can build up to treating each other badly to acting out, to invalidating and shaming and judging. And then it gets worse as we grow into the myth more fully, thinking that we have to get rid of anyone who's outside of our own comfort zone. I have to invalidate you in some way. I have to get rid of you. I have to bully you. I have to make you wrong. I have to shame you. I my goodness, this is the world that we live in. And it's all because we have not lived in a world that has known how to champion us as sacred individuals from the time we were little ones. We have not lived in a world that has known how to champion all of your feelings. All of them are necessary. You have times where you need to feel sad and to feel safe to feel sad, to process, to go through loss, to go through whatever you're negotiating. We have a whole spectrum of feeling emotional experiences that serve us at various ways at various times. We need a world that is learning how to claim the whole self. We need a world that is learning to trust that they are valued and respected. And if mommy and daddy value and respect me, they're teaching me how great it feels to be valued and respected as an individual. And that will inspire me to be more willing to value and respect other individuals. We are all learning different lessons. Our souls need different things. We need a safe place to explore life in so many different ways. But if we live on a planet where we're wounded, fearful children, and we've never matured into individuality and sacredness, then we're going to continue 
to make each other wrong. We're going to oppose. We're going to dominate. We're going to control. We're going to invalidate. And if you are acting out in this way in your individual life, you're going to fear that someone else is going to treat you the same way. And so now it will be a competition of who can invalidate who soonest, who can dominate, who can win. We live in such a myth that duality equals one winner and one loser. This is simply not true. It's quite immature if we look at it. Let's just look at even a race or a competition. There's only one winner. Imagine that thousands of people enter a competition. Thousands of people are having a journey and having an experience and learning and growing and discovering about themselves. Wow, I learned this, this, and this. I learned that I will benefit from all of the other things I've learned from watching everyone else. But if we're not encouraged to have a process as an individual to invest in self and learn and grow and enhance and expand, instead we're taught you have to win. The only person who has any value is the winner. I heard recently somebody talking about the Olympics. Now, my gosh, that is the pinnacle of certain athletic potentials on the whole planet. Do you not think we can relax a little bit and allow every single person who has achieved such a level to be celebrated and championed? Well, in this speech being put out in the world, somebody said, have you ever heard anybody brag about getting a bronze medal? What? I hope someone is profoundly proud of themselves for every step along the journey that it took to build the skills and to invest in self and to learn and grow and reach a point where they're in the Olympics and whether they win any medal or a bronze medal, this person was putting out into the world shame of every single one of us who didn't win a gold medal. This is the world of duality, a world of doubting our own value. It's shocking when we don't receive the nurturing needs at the beginning of our lives, how we end up with so much fear, shame, and doubt. Oh my gosh, I could tell you a hundred stories just from my own life. I went through decades of trying to prove my worth by achieving. I was out in the performing world. I was doing leading roles in opera and Broadway all over the world. And I was using these profound opportunities to prove my worth? Hmm. If I'm really honest, I was trying to prove that I wasn't unworthy. I was trying to prove that I wasn't unlovable. I was so ruled by my fear and shame of self because my mommy, daddy, like every person's I've ever met, didn't know how to provide those nurturing needs that I ended up doubting myself and not learning how to love and nurture and champion myself. I didn't learn how to see my value as an individual. And so I went out in the world to prove that I wasn't unlovable. I reached some really awesome levels in the world, but I also know from working with some extremely famous individuals, some extremely famous actors and singers. I saw them fighting 
their unworthiness. I saw them fighting for the same wounded thing I was. I have to prove I'm caught up in my wounds, my wounded narcissism, my desperation. When are we going to admit that we are a wounded world? When are we going to admit that we all carry fear and shame? When are we going to stop competing to be the best only? How wonderful to continue to develop your skills and to reach the greatest levels, whether you're a scientist or whether you're an athlete or whether you, it doesn't matter what field or what area of interest. Yay, continue to develop. But my goodness, when are we going to start working on the inner self? When are we going to start to understand until I learn how to love and value myself as an individual? I can't love you as an individual. I can only love what is in my comfort zone. I can only love what doesn't put me in threat. Duality and opposition comes from anything outside my comfort zone that feels threatening to the limits I learned were right. And if I don't do that and I don't win and I don't compete and I don't conquer, then I'm somehow unlovable? Oh my goodness, when are we going to stop and realize this will never, ever allow us to be at peace, to feel fulfilled, to feel safe, to value one another and the planet. None of this will ever allow us to evolve into the true pinnacle of life, a life of meaning, value, and purpose. A life where we know how to love and value. Where we see ourselves and one another as sacred. All of that is true. We are all sacred. But it doesn't matter if I know that and I treat you as sacred. If you're so busy defending and trying to prove that you're not unlovable. You won't let my love in. This is what the wound and the defense of duality perpetuate. Separation. Protection. I watch it all the time. If someone brings up a part of self that they do not love about themselves, they will reject others who try to love and value that part of self in them. So if I bring up a feeling that I learned as a child was unlovable, and that feeling comes up, I'm not going to trust that you truly know how to love and value that part of me. If I'm so busy protecting, pretending, competing, and trying to be the one who's right, good, lovable, while I try to bury, defend, protect the parts of me that I've learned to shame and fear. I adore that you're here having this conversation with me. I also adore that I know it's entirely possible to resolve duality and opposition. Everything that I teach in my School of Self Mastery is about loving and valuing self. It is very real and very grounded and very practical ways to show up and provide the nurturing needs that we all had from the time we were born. I know how to provide that, to educate, to inspire that. I've already done it with thousands of people around the world. 
That is what I would like the opportunity to deepen with you. You matter. You are lovable. You are sacred. But I can almost guarantee, because I know myself and my own history, that there are levels of you that simply do not believe it and may not even allow it today. But I want to plant a seed that rather than us getting caught up in fighting the other group or individual, oh, you're a Democrat, you're a Republican, oh, you're automatically wrong and bad. Instead of getting caught up in all of that, Let's start with, where am I loving and valuing me? Where do I judge and shame me? Where are the parts of myself that I was taught were unacceptable in mommy-daddy comfort zones? Where can I hold a space for other individuals? I used to argue when I was a child for the people that I already loved, who happened to be a different race and a different religion and a different culture. I hadn't yet learned about what duality was, but I sure did know when I liked some of my friends at school that I did not like hearing perspectives that diminished them, that made them wrong, even unlovable. No, no, no. I'm glad that the child part of me recognized this truth and that I've grown into a much more evolved understanding of it. And I don't have to make people who are caught up in duality wrong and bad. I certainly spent decades resolving more and more and more of my own. And I continue to look at the layers that are still impacted in any way like that. Evaluate you. Learn to love and value you. And do your best to know that if you want to feel safe, connected, acknowledged, accepted with compassion, that so does everyone else. So does everyone else. Begin to interrupt the choices that don't work well. Choose well, live fully, be good to you. I will see you soon, sharing more perspectives of how we can make a true difference in this world. Have a great week.